This is a, um, a goal which is uh, about child mortality, and child mortality is about the death of individual children, and the individual children who die uh, in families, uh, and, and, and every individual child death um, is really a, a terrible tragedy. Uh, I first uh, became involved in this field in 1980 when I was working in the Sudan, and um, 1980, uh, interestingly, was the same year that UNICEF produced their first global statistics on child mortality. And this is an excerpt from the State of the World's Children 1980, uh, written by James Grant. And um, these figures, um, uh, well, in 1980, according to UNICEF, 12% of all children in the world died before their fifth birthday, and 20% uh, of children in sub-Saharan Africa died before their fifth birthday. Now, people who know the field will know that this is a pretty extreme uh, under-representation of the true numbers. But nevertheless, when these numbers were broadcast and were, were sort of publicised by UNICEF in 1980, <laughs> They produced uh, an enormous uh, drive and, and, and impetus uh, throughout the world to try and do something about this problem. Even though many people who were um, at the time measuring infant mortality were doing it as an indicator of development rather than as a problem in itself. But nevertheless, this rather, I would say, underestimate of the size of the problem in 1980 um, spurred the world on to what became known as the child survival revolution of the 1980s. Um, UNICEF and, uh, and WHO and uh, other agencies were involved in that. And all that and many, many other things, uh, development and uh, <coughs> the other things that have been discussed here probably all contributed to the downward trend that you can see in all these curves. Uh, these curves represent uh, under five mortality over the past 50 years uh, by region. And um, the key things to look at are the African one, which is in red, um, and uh, all the others uh, are in different colours, but you can see that the African one is, of, is of course, remained, uh, has been somewhat higher and that the decline which has been seen over the past 50 years has been somewhat flatter. The importance of pointing to, uh, of, of um, bringing this up at this time is that the MDG4, which as we'll see, is um, uh, to achieve a reduction uh, of child mortality by t uh, of two-thirds <coughs> Uh, by 2015, based on the 1990 levels, in other words, over a 25-year period, um, was based really on an extrapolation from these curves. And, and you can see, if you look at the African curve, it would be quite a lot of, uh, let's say, optimistic extrapolation to think that, that you were going to get a two-thirds reduction over a 25-year period based on the shape of that curve. Most of the problem uh, is in Africa, and you can see that here by this list of the countries on track. Now, there are a few surprises here. Um, some of them are not surprising at all. I mean, Mexico, uh, the, the, there, there's a number of countries there that we know have been doing very well and have made excellent progress in child health in general. So it's not surprising to see them listed <coughs> as on track. But um, uh, Laos would be, a prob uh, would be a surprise for me to see there. And um, maybe a couple of other surprises. And um, when you do look at these uh, uh, figures, one has to remember, uh, as we'll come to later in this talk, the quality of the data that one's talking about. So only one country in Africa is on track. That country is Eritrea. This is a picture from Eritrea. It's uh, not typical of African countries. It may be typical of the Horn of Africa. It's a pretty poor country. Um, in fact, it's only existed as a country since, no, since 1993. Um, this is uh, a, a photograph taken in Asmara, the capital. Uh, but this is really what most of the country looks like. And uh, uh, this is a, a desperately poor country, extremely difficult environment. Uh, major problems with water access, uh, major problems with health, uh, uh, health service access. Um, this is one of the um, um, first level health facilities uh, in Eritrea, uh, manned by um, a single dresser who's living there. So what are the Eritreans doing right if they are the only country in Africa which is on track? <coughs> Um, as I mentioned, they, um, you know, Eritrea didn't exist as a country in 1990, but um, that, of course that doesn't stop us getting retrospective mortality data and estimating what the mortality was in what was then the, the Ethiopian area of Eritrea in 1990. Um, but since then they've had two wars, um, one <coughs> short one with Yemen, one uh, longer one and a very bitter one with Ethiopia. They have continuing conflict with Ethiopia, which continues uh, at, a, at a smouldering level up to the present day. There are many internal problems. There is internment of, of youth. There is a, a problem of um, youth being drafted into the armies for indefinite periods. And in the middle of all this, um, uh, they've ejected uh, from the country pretty well all of the major international NGOs and bilateral agencies. Um, they did do DHS surveys in 1994 and 2001, and those were the basis of the decision that Eritrea is on track. 
there are some good things going on there. I'm not questioning, I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm just pointing out the, the problems that have occurred in Eritrea over the last 15 years. And um, immunisation coverage has been outstanding and there's been uh, huge improvements. IMCI has expanded um, substantially within Eritrea. For people who are not aware of this, IMCI is Integrated Management of Childhood Illness. It's the, the basic strategy for uh, child survival for many uh, developing countries. And uh, Bednet, uh, Bednet uh, use in Eritrea has increased enormously uh, during this period um, and um, that would, re would result in a reduction of malaria deaths. But nevertheless, uh, it's hard uh, in, in some ways to see um, how Eritrea could be the most successful country in Africa. People who've, uh, who've discussed the implications of uh, setting global goals for child mortality, such as Millennium Development Goals, um, have um, uh, frequently come to the conclusion that any rapid improvements in child survival using large-scale um, uh, national-level programs to, to, um, to reduce child mortality um, can only achieve that end at the cost of increasing inequity. Why should that be? Um, inequity, for those who are not familiar with it as a term, uh, is, a, is a term which really means uh, inequality, uh, but inequality uh, with the implication of unfairness. So it's unfair inequality. And of course there can be no more unfair inequality than, than uh, in, in the risk of child mortality. And, uh, and so the, there is this accusation that's been placed, as it were, at the MDG4 process, that by focusing on large-scale interventions, which inevitably will be given to the same, or you know, will often be given to the same children, and by taking the, um, the, what people call the low-hanging fruit approach, it's a term that I personally find uh, unpleasant, but it's a term that one hears quite often, and it really means doing the easy things. So doing the easy things and then trying to m make the gains wherever you can make them and not worrying about the children who are living in the remote areas and in the mountains and in the, in, who are in the difficult to reach communities, um, that th th these strategies will all lead to an increasing inequity. And I would suggest that, uh, that um, just on first principles, unless equity considerations are considered when a new intervention is being introduced, um, it will almost in inevitably lead uh, to increasing inequity. And here you can see that in Brazil, in the, in the, 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 um, the poorest 20% of the community, um, you have the highest mortality by a long way. And this is referred to by Cesar Victoria and others as bottom inequity. In other words, most of the other uh, quintiles are similar, but the bottom group is much worse off. Starting by with looking at the, at the uh, neonatal mortality, and, um, and I would say that just on what we know about Africa, most of us would assume that the neonatal, in, neonatal, neonatal mortality in Eritrea was between 35 and 45, probably. So figures of 20 are very sort of hard to believe. And um, what, so possibly these figures um, for the, um, sorry, for the, for the wealthiest and then the next two quintiles are probably believable, perhaps 20-ish up here and then going up to 40-something for the third quintile. And then after this, I think it's just, uh, it can't possibly be true. And, and clearly what's happening down here is there is major under-reporting and that that under-reporting is, is concentrated in those communities that are the poorest communities, the disenfranchised communities, and the ones who undoubtedly have the highest mortalities. The other thing to learn here is I think that there is a global problem, a huge problem in Africa, but also a global problem of under-recognition under and under-reporting of neonatal mortality. And recent data from India would support that. So in conclusion, I would say that MGG4 uh, is a major opportunity to improve child survival globally. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong, I think that the, the increase in energy that's gone into child survival over the last uh, uh, seven or eight years as a result of this um, has been outstanding, especially for somebody working in this field who witnessed what I would call the sort of dark ages of the 1990s. But I would say it focus overemphasis on country level goal achievements uh, should really be dis uh, discouraged. And I would, would, um, uh, I would echo uh, the comments that were made by um, the speaker uh, here a, a few weeks back that um, talking about Af Africa continuously as a basket case in this, in this way is, is really un unfair and uh, perhaps inappropriate. You know, Africa is making progress. We should be really happy about that. We don't necessarily have to believe the data. I don't really believe the data from Eritrea, as you can see. Um, we perhaps don't believe data from other parts of Africa either. But there's lots of other evidence that progress is being made and we should be happy about the progress and we should be um, encouraging uh, African countries to move forward as they do.